So we'll just start recording um, now. Um, again, welcome. My name is Nick Rosado. Like I said, um, this evening, we just wanted to uh, offer you the opportunity um, as prospective transfer students, just to learn a little bit more um, about not only our School of Engineering, uh, but the transfer program and transfer process itself. Um, there's a unique um, and diverse group that is joining us this evening. Um, some of you in the local upstate New York area, um, others who signed up I know are from North Carolina, Oregon, overseas in China and different countries. Um, so we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules um, to come join us. If you're not familiar um, or too familiar with Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, um, we're a medium-sized technological university located in upstate New York, specifically Troy, New York, about two and a half hours north of New York City, three and a half, three hours uh, west of uh, Boston, and probably four, four and a half hours south of Montreal. Um, we're a medium-sized institution, uh, about 6,200 undergraduates, and then about another thousand graduate students on our campus um, as well. Um, one of the great things, um, although we are a top 60 ranked national research university, um, we still really do focus on and pay attention to our undergraduate um, education. Um, that's one of the key things you'll hear about today, um, just really the attention that you'll get from our faculty and staff, um, the opportunities that you'll get um, from being a student at Rensselaer um, in terms of internships, co-ops, um, employment or graduate school um, after you do um, graduate um, from Rensselaer, um, whether that's after two years of study, three years of study, or some students might stay an extra year or so to even get a master's degree, um, that's certainly um, an option. Um, we have lots of great research centers on campus. Um, all of our classes are taught um, by our faculty. And one of the things that I really enjoy working with transfer students is really encouraging them um, to get active and participate um, on our campus. So um, we know that a lot of transfer students are only here um, on our campus for two years. So you really do need to hit the ground running in terms of getting involved in research clubs, organizations. Um, so that's really why um, we have a lot of support staff um, on our campus, um, specifically working with transfer students, so you can kind of make that um, easy transition um, to our campus. Um, one thing that I kind of forgot to mention, um, near the end, we'll certainly leave time for questions and answers. Um, that's why we're here. We want all of your um, questions kind of answered um, at some point. Um, so when we open it up, um, we certainly can um, uh, you can unmute yourself, um, ask those questions. If you feel more comfortable um, typing the information in the chat box, um, we can cover it through there um, as well. One of the things, even if you grew up in the Capital District of New York, you may not know, um, RPI was founded back in 1824. So we are considered the oldest three grand technological university um, in North America and even um, the English speaking world. Um, so we have a long line of academic success um, and tradition. As I mentioned before, if you are from outside the area, we're located in Troy, New York. Um, Troy, New York is a small kind of former industrial city um, that's really gone, undergone a great revitalization over the last decade or so. Um, so hundreds of new shops and restaurants have opened up in the downtown quarter. Um, our campus of RPI is on a hill overlooking um, downtown Troy. Um, on the one edge of, of Troy is the Hudson River, which is pictured in the bottom um, left-hand slide. Um, but throughout the year, there's food truck festivals, there's a great farmer's market um, every Saturday, either outside or inside, depending on um, the time of year that you can go in and get uh, produce and groceries and foods and drinks um, and um, really a great atmosphere in the uh, downtown Troy um, area. There's festivals like Rockin' on the River, the Troy uh, River Fest, Troy Pig Out. Um, so really there has developed, particularly over the last five to 10 years, this great university experience um, where students, um, faculty, staff, um, we're all intermined uh, or, or intermingled um, with, um, with the uh, kind of larger Troy um, community um, at large. So really great community, great area to be involved with. Um, we're located in the capital district of New York, so Albany, Schenectady, Troy, the three main cities. Um, there's 15 or so area colleges, um, so it's an active uh, college community. So lots of uh, college students um, to, in the area to kind of interact with, um, get involved with in various clubs um, and activities. If you're not extremely familiar with RPI, I mean, you've probably interacted with some of our alums and their inventions and creations. Um, our motto at RPI is why not change the world? Um, so we really do take that seriously and hope um, our students and our graduates are having a positive impact um, on, on the greater um, community of the world. Um, so everything from the Ferris wheel was invented by an RPI graduate. Um, one of our architecture alums designed some of the more interesting Apple stores um, that are around. RPI graduate invented sunscreen. 
Um, the picture of the baseball stadium on your screen is Fenway Park, um, both Fenway Park, the old Yankee Stadium, the old Detroit Tiger Stadiums um, were actually built and developed uh, by a father and son um, RPI graduate team called the Osborne Construction Company, and they are really at the forefront um, of uh, park and uh, baseball stadium construction during the early um, 1900s. Um, the at signs pictured on the slide, uh, Ray Tomlinson, who's considered the father of email, um, was an RPI graduate. And we've also had great connections with NASA and the space program, really from its infancy um, to current day. Um, George Lowe um, was an RPI graduate and later became one of our presidents. Um, he was in charge of many of the Apollo and Gemini space missions. Um, so there's been some great articles about him with the anniversary of the moon landing um, over the last um, year or so. Um, all the way to within the last um, three or four years, we had one of our graduates, who uh, Reed Weissman, who was stationed on the International um, Space Station. So um, our graduates really do uh, go on to do um, wonderful things um, after graduation. Um, overall, our 6,200 undergraduates are divided between our five schools that you see pictured. Um, so most of you or all of you here tonight are interested in our School of Engineering, which is our largest school on campus. Just over 50% of our students are enrolled in our School of Engineering. Uh, but just because you're enrolled in our School of Engineering doesn't mean that you can't take advantage of all the opportunities that our entire university um, has to offer. Um, so as a School of Engineering student, you will be required to take courses in our School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences, um, in our School of Science. Um, you have the opportunity to take um, courses from our business school or even if you wanted to um, from our architecture school. Um, so although we do have these five distinct schools, we like to say that there's very low walls between them um, and students have the opportunity to take some classes that really do um, interest them. Um, as an incoming transfer student, you might be a little bit more limited in the kind of course selection that you do have, um, but you will have an opportunity to take those humanities and social science courses. Um, you could take some business courses. You would even have the opportunity to spend an extra year on campus and get a master's degree. And that master's degree could be within your home field of study within their school of engineering, or there's even some opportunities in our school of business um, for non-engineering or for non-business majors to complete a master's of science and business and management and just an additional year of study. Um, so it is nice to have these people on campus. Um, you'll have students in your classes who might be non-engineering students um, or might have engineering as one of their two degrees or a minor. Um, so if you're interested in areas outside of engineering, you can certainly take classes in music and theater and dance um, and physics and chemistry um, and environmental studies and business. Um, they're all available for you to take advantage of um, at our larger university. Um, because of our kind of smaller size, um, there's, there's very few limits and kind of limitations as far as kind of which classes and courses you are able to take um, and to register. Kind of getting to what you're all here for, the School of Engineering. Um, the degree programs that the School of Engineering offers are listed there. Um, they're all ABET accredited, um, so meaning that they meet certain standards by the accreditation board. Um, and we've always done well on the ABET um, evaluations that take place um, every um, few years. Um, all of our majors are opened up um, to incoming transfer students. Um, there's no kind of caps on, on enrollment in any of our majors. Um, so whether you apply to biomedical engineering or you apply to chemical engineering or mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, um, your decision basically would be the same. Um, we don't have um, set caps or set maximum numbers of enrollments in any of our majors um, on our campus. Um, we do ask transfer students to select an incoming major just so you can kind of hit the ground running, uh, work on your requirements as soon as possible. Um, but it is even possible as a transfer student um, to add a second major, to change your major once you are enrolled um, at Rensselaer. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility within the curriculum, um, within the programs. And as we go through kind of the presentation um, this evening, um, you'll really see and discover that we really do try to provide our students with kind of real world learning opportunities um, during their time as undergraduates at Rensselaer. So it's everything from in the classroom um, research projects um, that are sponsored by industry um, to outside the classroom um, opportunities through the various clubs and organizations that our School of Engineering and our Rensselaer in general offers. Um, to internship and co-op opportunities um, in conjunction with your faculty, with the staff, with the Center for Career and Professional Development, um, those opportunities will be opened up um, to, to you as an undergraduate student. Uh, it's one of the really the feedback that we get from a lot of um, companies, a lot of graduate schools, is they like hiring RPI students because they are ready to hit that ground running fast. Um, they're able and have experience working um, in a, a corporate um, environment or have research experience um, under their belt. So we really are trying to provide students with those opportunities um, as undergraduate um, students. 
So I'm lucky enough this evening to be joined um, by two, um, two members of our School of Engineering, uh, Rama and Ta uh, Tom. I think Tom is here. He was having some uh, computer difficulties, but I see him showing up um, on the screen. Um, so for now, he, I'll be quiet um, for a little while and turn things over to them. They can introduce themselves and just kind of um, go through the next few slides talking specifically about the Rensselaer edu Engineering Education. Thank you. Can you hear me? It's Tom here. Yep. Super. All right. Yep. Um, I, very quick, off the record, Rama, do you want to go with the email that I probably you probably didn't get a chance to read? I did. Okay. All good. <laughs> okay, all good. All right. Hi, I'm Tom. Um, <clears throat> some of you might, should you choose to come, and I certainly hope you do, you can call me Professor Haley if you want to in the classroom, or you can call me Tom, because I worked out in industry. And when I went to my boss, my very first boss out at Westinghouse, and said, Oh, Ms. Loftus, I'm really sorry I was late to work this morning. She was like, call me Tom, uh, call me Pat. Yeah, don't call me Tom. You know, everything's sort of first name. And I sort of brought that attitude into the classroom. You will also meet professors who, you know, welcome you into their research establishment and expect to be called Dr. So-and-so or Professor so and -so. But you can refer to me as Tom, whatever you're comfortable with, Mr. Haley, Dr. Haley, I don't care. Um, there's a real collaborative spirit that comes to that. And that's part of the educational process as well. Uh, a lot of you are coming from schools that are highly competitive, where you're, you know, you're vying for your top grades. I lay it on the line in my class, as most professors do at RPI. You already are the best and the brightest, and you know, I, we're not looking to compare you to each other. If all of you succeed, I have no problem giving you all an A. And then I have to actually follow up and say, you know, and if none of you succeed, I'll fail all of you and I don't care. <laughs> it's like, no, we don't want to hear that part. All right, but the, the, the whole sort of industry side of things is very strong at Rensselaer, that notion. That's why industry really likes to hire Rensselaer graduates. They know you know how to work hard and they know that you've been exposed to the kinds of issues that they deal with. And that's something that's very noticeable about the education here. And something that you as a transfer student need to be very aware of, your learning style. And I'm, I know I'm not sort of going linearly with the bullet points here, but they go along with what we're seeing, the resources to explore, to learn, to grow and develop confidence. Some of you really like the educational model where you go, you listen to somebody talk, maybe, you look at the book, you might even open it, and you might even read some of it, and you simply absorb the information, you take three tests after cramming the night before, and you're done and you'll never need to see that course ever again. Don't go here. <laughs> it's not the model we use. Well, a number of our majors are very vertically integrated. We will take knowledge from one course, pass it to the next, to the next. Now, as a transfer, that can be frightening because you're like, well, how do I know I've got it? The vast majority of you will be fine. If we really thought you were gonna have a problem, we would not accept you. So come with confidence but also come sort of as Nick was saying, just like industry wants you ready to hit the ground running. It is very fast paced. You will be using that knowledge. And in particular, there's the famous exam question. You know, some questions are right out of the homework. The homework says one plus one equals on the test. Guess what? Two plus two equals. There's the second tier of questions where it's like four minus two equals. And here's the definition of minus. And you're like, oh, I got to think about that. It's like the reverse. Then there's the third one. And that is a question you've never seen before in your lives, hopefully. And yet everything in the course has prepared you to answer that question. And that's what throws transfer students for a loop. Because, you know, for most of you from wherever you've come, especially at the, at the community college level, they sort of do one and two really well. Here's the homework. Here's the test. We're going the next step up. Why? This slide. This slide is why. We don't want you going into industry and having them say, yeah, you're a good engineer, just barely above a technician. Time and again, we get graduates who come back saying, you know, I'm so far in debt. I don't know why I bothered. What was the point of all that hard work? And then within six months, they realize a Rensselaer education doesn't just get you your first job. You can go anywhere and get a first job. We get you your first promotion. People will notice you. They will know that you can actually solve real world problems, that you can take knowledge you have and push it. And that's the reason to consider Rensselaer, because you want to be challenged. You're looking forward to working hard. You're looking to up your game for where you are or, or pivot 
maybe you're at a very experiential learning, you want more analytical learning here. And that's what we want for our students. So, you know, if you go online and you look and people say, oh, it's a really hard school, again, well, yes, it is a hard school, but again, we wouldn't take you if we didn't think you could do it. So you are among the best and brightest. We want you to come here and, and uh, you know, apply and come to be the leader, not to be the glorified extraordinary technician, but to be the advancer, the innovator, the person that comes up with the great ideas. And that's what this slide's all about. All right. And we had we we yeah, I was about to I was about to say switch on, but I noticed the Center for Student Leadership Development, data intensive and communication intensive requirements. These are the you know, a lot of you in particular, you want to be an engineer, that means I will never write again for the rest of my life. I'm sorry, but approximately one third to one half of all engineering is communication. And we stress that here. So again, if you don't want to work, eh, look elsewhere. But if you want to be challenged and you want your boss to say, that was a really good report. We should put you in charge of this project. That's what we want for our Rensselaer graduates. And that's why we have those requirements. So thank you, Nick. We can finally get to the next page. We got a gazillion different majors. And as Nick Rosato pointed out, they are, there is an interdisciplinary nature to many of them. However, you will choose a major, I, I believe for engineers, I, I, I guess Nick is saying they don't require you to, but for you to, for those of you who want to graduate in four semesters, you're going to want to hit the ground running. You got to look at your major. I see Rama's nodding, so electrical computer systems is totally on board with that. Um, and at traditional schools, you know, we're all in our separate silos and that's kind of what this, this slide is showing. But at Rensselaer, we're all on the same farm. Okay, we're all in the same community and there's a lot of cross fertilization. There will be mechanical engineers who go see John Wen in electrical computer and systems because they want to go into robotics and nobody really cares that he's electrical, not mechanical. No, it's wide open. Research, we have students doing research as engineers in the school of science with people in management all over the place. So the opportunities are huge. The most important thing for you to know though about this is to not get overwhelmed because it's going to be on you. We're not going to, you know, when you finally decide to come here and you come in, we're going to be like, okay, what do you want to do? And you say, I don't know. And that's okay for a little while, but you have to take the initiative to see what's available because it's all there. Even if you're saying, well, I'm just a transfer. I guess I'm not as good as the one of the four years. Not at all. You're missing certain things. You're missing two years of coming up to speed. You'll only get two weeks, if even. But nonetheless, everything is there for you. And so all these little separate silos that at other schools really are separate silos, they're integrated here and you can go across the board with it. I'll roll to the next one. So we have a lot. So one of the things I, I emphasize is that we have a lot, we're very analytical. I guess that's where I want to start. So a number of you like to do things and then learn from what you do and then think about the theory. And I've got a name for you. It's called Worcester Polytechnic Institute. A very good school, don't get me wrong. And I, I, if I said it was bad, that's on us. Cause you know what? There's a lot of professors who did their graduate work at Rensselaer who teach at Worcester, but they have a very different educational philosophy. They build on a foundation of experiential learning and then they get to some of the analysis. And that's why you're less likely to go on to graduate school from WPI. But if that's your learning style, look into it. Rensselaer is quite different in that sense. We are very analytically based. We see a lot more of the world through mathematical models. And that's what also what makes the work somewhat more difficult, but that's also what makes you much more valuable to industry. You're not just taking what's already been done and being incremental you can invent new things from the ground up, from different perspectives. So a lot of people would walk away from that and say, I'm gonna do you know, every semester just math and, and what am I gonna do? No, that's what this picture is showing. Of course we have experiential learning. Yes, we have labs, but we don't do the labs sort of first year and second year. So those of you from community colleges where you know, you'd say, well, all we did was classroom work. We really didn't have much lab experience. You haven't missed anything. It's at the big, the top of the, the curve, you know, the Manufacturing Innovation Learning Lab, where you're gonna get into these places um, uh, uh, in, in your junior and senior year, which is again, is what most of you are coming for. 
you're going to see that. You're going to be working with the wind tunnel. You're going to be in those OT Swanson design lab for your capstone design course. So yes, we of course have lots of experiential learning inside the class and in all sorts of clubs and activities outside the class, which I think Rama will touch on a little later as well. So yes, it's here, but the foundation is the analytical bent. You know, we learn the theory and build from there and then get you in the lab, which could really absorb that from all these different perspectives. So the civil engineers, yes, we've got a real centrifuge that'll fly you around, you know, like you see in the space movies and stuff. We No, we don't put people in the centrifuge. We wish we could, but uh, you know, in the wind tunnel for the arrows and so forth. And again, the OT Swanson design lab, is highly multidisciplinary. You can be on a team with electrical, computer and systems, mechanical, uh, occasionally nuclear materials engineers, people from the school of management will come and you'll all be on your team together with your own perspectives working. And that's the way industry wants you. And that's another feature of Rensselaer. Industry has generally come to us. And even though we have these departments, Rama's in her department, I'm in my department, and we have these silos, we're still one farm. So when there are technical electives, we very often say, choose what you're going to enjoy, what you want to do. And when you go into that interview, in, you know, the, the recruiters that I've talked to are not going to say, you know, well, they are going to say, they're going to say, you know, which, which kind of mechanical engineer are you? What kind of electrical engineer are you? And you're allowed to say, these are the courses I took. And by the way, you're a company that does this and I can help you with that. And it doesn't matter. They just want to care that you have a purpose and identity. So even if you come from all these different directions, you want that experience of what do these other majors do? Because if you're going to run the project, you want to know what all the employees below you and all those different majors know how to do. And that's a difference that Rensselaer can bring to you by putting you in the OT Swanson Design Lab for your capstone design to learn and experience and work with these people. So you can walk into an interview and maybe you are a civil engineer being interviewed by a chemical engineer and you'll still be able to talk to them and share some common language and all because you've dealt with them before. So that's what I like about this picture. Yes, we have experiential learning. Clicking on. There is more <laughs> than just learning at Rensselaer. If all you do is go to class, you have missed the point. It's don't, you know, just quit college because this, you know, you just might as well just read a book and rack up the late charges. All right. <clears throat> There's more to it. A lot of transfer students, when you visit other schools, you know, you're going to you're going to get the sense that, you know, I, well, these are things for four year students and I can't do that. That's not true. However, it is difficult. One of the things, for example, I know nuclear engineers and aeronautical engineers, the, the chances of doing an international exchange program or global partnership is almost zero unless you take an extra semester or unless you're going to be here for six semesters instead of just four as a transfer. But in general, it is very difficult. And you know what? Same is true for four-year students. It's very difficult because you don't usually go international in your freshman in your first year. So it's just hard for some majors, not just you as a transfer. The difference is though, if you're an electrical, mechanical, civil, environmental engineer, chemical engineer, and you do want to go abroad, a four-year student, well, they've got two semesters to sort of think about it and plan and decide how they're going to do it. You you'll either have two weeks to figure it out or you'll actually figure it out before you even come here because you'll have to plan your first semester very carefully, but it can be done. And if that's an experience that you want, talk to your, you will have very personal advising. I think Rob might, might talk more about this later, but you know, the, a lot of transfer students laud us again and again for, you know, they like, I've never had advising like this before in my life. And we're like, gee, I'm really sorry I'm not giving you enough time. <laughs> and so, you know, we think we're just barely meeting okay. And transfer students just think we hit it out of the park. So we can prepare you for all sorts of these experiential uh, learning things outside campus, what you can do with away semesters and so forth, co-op experiences. But also this extends to clubs and activities, right? And I talked about sort of, you know, we yes, we have experiential learning, but we're very theoretical. Part of it comes from laboratories. Part of it comes, if you choose, from joining these clubs or being involved in the forge or the maker space or something like that, bringing your engineering skills to light. Maybe you're doing the Formula SAE car uh, automotive competition as a chemical engineer, as a mechanical engineer, whoever it may be. So clubs and activities are important. And that's really good for you as transfers because one of the biggest things that we've heard from transfers is, I don't know anybody. 
You know, how are you going to, how are you going to make friends and, and learn, you know, because again, we're very collaborative. You don't want to distance yourself from that. You want to meet other people you can work with. So everybody can get an A, you know, that's very hard to do, but I'm not suggesting it's easy, but the more you can work and it's, I'm not talking about networking. I'm literally talking about people who will challenge you and people you can work with to solve problems. And we've got tons of opportunities for people to do that. And again, the bad news is it's on you. When you come here, hit the ground running, because that's who we're looking for, and start joining these things and meeting these people. And you'll find one, eh, that's not for you, but this one is. And again, most transfer students within weeks, sometimes months, are like, I get it now. I understand this place. I've met all these people. This is great. Um, so this is just sort of the slide that says, we, you know, you're not limited because you're, you're, you're just going to be here for two more years. Research is the same thing. Again, you know, if, if you don't have time or if you, if you don't big on the clubs and activities and you're not going abroad, how do you take advantage to Rensselaer? Why not just go out with your associate's degree and then be done with, you know, or, you know, some two-year degree or stay at the school you're at? The big opportunity, again, research. You get faculty. Like, well, my job is to teach. That is what I research. That is what I do. But the, uh, the majority of the tenure, tenure track, and I'm not tenure, tenure, tenure track, but the tenure, tenure track faculty, they are doing research. That's 50% of their job, 50% teaching, usually 50% doing research. They want you because they got so many wonderful things to do and they don't have enough time. Neither do you, but you'll make that time and together with them, $100 million in research funding every year. You can earn some of that, or you can do research for credit, maybe as some of your technical electives. More than 900 students participating in undergraduate research. And you know what? I'm still depressed that that is low, right? That means only about one quarter of our students are actually participating. Oh, wait, uh, that, that's across the campus, I think. Opportunities begin freshman year. Yes, that's true. But usually you're right. You're thinking, well, I think I better know something. You know enough. Those of you who are coming in as juniors, you know enough to at least start, become engaged, to get in and at least at the ground level. So don't hesitate to ask as soon as you get on campus. Those of you who are for six semesters, you're going to be fine. You'll be golden. You'll have plenty of time to figure this out. But again, the four semester uh, transfer students think, you know, I'm only going to be here a little time. I don't have time to do research. Again, most majors have technical electives. You may come in with some free electives left. And even if you don't, you can still add things on top occasionally. Yes, it's a hard school, but it's there. Maybe you can only give them three hours a week. Talk to the professor. They may have something for you for three hours a week. All right. And again, the interdisciplinary nature of it. Now, when you participate in that research, that brings us to this slide where you can look ahead and say, wow, this is really fun. Now, graduate school isn't all about research, but it is an important component in engineering. Out of 30 credits to get your master's degree, usually six are devoted to research on a project or on a thesis or what it may be. And that brings us to the co-terminal program. You do have minimum requirements. You need to come here. You need to make, uh, uh, eventually, by the time you graduate, get a 3.0 or better. You need to find a faculty advisor that you're going to do research with. That's a lot easier if you've already been looking around, not necessarily doing research with faculty, but when you take their courses, Talk to them and say, what do you do? What do you do? What do your friends do? What, what do you think is interesting? That allows you within one year, you take 15 credits each semester because as transfers, you don't, usually don't have time to preload some courses. So usually you take two semesters. Sometimes you add in a summer as well and you'll talk to your faculty advisor and all of you will have a faculty advisor as well as there'll be staff advising. that will be advising you on how to progress with this such that in one year you can get your master's degree. So why bother? Well, I'll tell you why. Because even if you had to pay for your engineering master's degree completely out of pocket over your lifetime, it would still be vastly worth it. Your lifetime earnings are so much higher. Your job satisfaction winds up increasing. You see the salary, you know, it dramatically goes up to 81,000. That was back in 2018. Um, and again, it's more about quality of life with me as well. The ability to choose projects that you want to work on, your ability to go to advancement, to make teams in the company you're at, or, you know, go out and start your own business in a shorter amount of time. Co-terminal can allow that. It doesn't have to be an engineer. You see at the bottom, you can go to BSM uh, MBA for both science and engineering students. 
You can be, let's say, an undergraduate in mechanical engineering and decide you want your master's degree in environmental engineering. And as long as maybe you've taken a couple of prerequisites, you're in. So again, it's wide open to you and the potentials are enormous. So that's something also you wanna start thinking about day one when you come here, what is your goal? What is your objective? Because again, you're only gonna have you know four semesters, some of you to, to think this through, but we have it for you. It's not just limited to four-year students. Next one. Oh, uh, Rama, have I gone too far? Where was I supposed to stop? I think I just stepped on your it's okay. presentation. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I can take it from here. Well, I'm um, I'm Rama. I'm the staff advisor for electrical and computer and systems engineering, and I work actually specifically with our transfer students. So if you decide to do electrical or computer and systems engineering here, you'll see a lot of me and get a lot of emails from me. But um, so so our students, um, especially our transfer students as well, um, go on to get um, internships and co-ops at really great places. So internships, a lot of times those will happen over the summer. Um, co-ops, that's when you'll take a semester off and you'll do, um, you know, an internship. You'll work somewhere for kind of the summer through the semester or just during the semester. Um, and our students, um, especially our transfer students, have have had opportunities at, at wonderful places and that's a really good opportunity to get yourself um, some experience experience in industry in addition to, like Tom was saying, all of the amazing stuff that you would be doing at um, RPI. And we have a wonderful career center that can kind of help you get on track with that. Um, I also know that we have some great um, alumni connections, um, not only you know to their to their companies and what they're doing um but i know that for example in in ecsc we've got a like mentoring program with our alumni to help um and i encourage all of our transfer students to take part in that to sort of get that information um, from kind of every resource they have. But our students go on to do great internships, great co-ops. And um, I think there was a slide before that, Nick, if you can go back, kind of links to the ARCH program. Um, if you come in with only four semesters left, you usually don't do the ARCH program. But if you come in with um, six semesters, uh, then you you might do the ARCH program. It depends how many credits you bring in. Um, but the, the ARCH program, essentially, it's an opportunity to get um, internship or research experience built into your time um, as a student at RPI. And what happens is the summer between sophomore and junior year, you'll take a semester of classes. And then in either the fall or the spring of your junior year, you you would go out and do an opportunity. So you'd get an internship or a co-op, you'd do research. This is also a time for study abroad. That's another option, study at another institution abroad or at home. Um, and there's volunteering. There's a couple other um, uh, options that you can do. Again, um, depending on how many credits you bring in, this may or may not be something that you do, but you always can take a co-op if that is something that you're interested in and you kind of want to um, shift your, your plan that way. Um, and as Tom said, you'll be working very closely with your, with your advisors, and that's something that you can definitely talk about and kind of organize and, and figure out how to get what you want and what you want to do um, and finish all the requirements that you have. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Um, so as I said, we have a really great um, Center for Career and Professional Development. They're always doing um, events to help our students prepare for, for industry, for getting internships, getting opportunities, connecting with the community in Troy and our alumni network um, to kind of make, uh, you know, opportunities, connections for our students. Um, and so they're really available for one-on-one -on -one advising, um, review, just again, kind of like everything else that you're going to get at RPI, there really is an opportunity here to get personalized advice and support. You just have to go after it. You have to initiate that conversation. We have great career fairs twice a year. A lot of companies from all over the U.S. and I think some international companies come and that's a really good opportunity to get FaceTime or Zoom time <laughs> with them right now um, and um, and interviews and, uh, you know, 85% of, of our job seeking students have a position with, within six months of graduation. It's hard to argue with a number like that. Um, so, uh, you know, we really try and set you up in every way that we can, not just in your engineering um, curriculum, but also in other aspects of um, 
kind of your your higher your college journey to succeed once you graduate. Um, so yeah, after after Rensselaer, our students get, you know, all sorts of of jobs, um, and they also, you know, at, at a lot of great companies, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, um, and uh, you know, really jobs that they're interested in and and passionate about um, that are using the skills that that they've learned. Um, we also have a lot of students that go on to graduate school um, either after the co term or after their bachelor's degree, um, and so we're we're really you know proud of the fact that our students can go on to do multiple things, whatever they really are interested in doing. Um, so we have a lot of really great student support and it's something that you should definitely take advantage of as a transfer student. Um, and so I, I will start off by saying that you have your advisor. Every student has a faculty advisor. Um, and there's also in a lot of cases, you know, someone like me, a staff advisor that works with you as well. So you have someone who really knows your curriculum, really can advise you um, on classes you should be taking based on your interests and can help you plan out your time at RPI to kind of maximize what you want to do and getting your 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 coursework um, completed. We also have the Advising and Learning Assistance Center, which is a great resource. Um, they offer tutoring. They also offer support for, you know, for learning support, things like time management, um, kind of, you know, anything that you'd want in that um, sense. You can make an appointment, again, an individual advising appointment. And like I said, there's a really robust tutoring program for a lot of the classes that you can take advantage of. Um, we also have the Archer Center for Student Leadership and Development that does a lot of programming, um, which is something you can get involved in. Um, the Office of Student Transitions, which um, transfer students are part of student transition so it's a wonderful office and you'll be hearing from them um, a lot uh, class deans who are again staff members that are there to support you um, you're assigned a class dean um, you'll get assigned a class dean when when you arrive and they're there um, to support you in more student life um, aspects of your your time at RPI and they're also really accessible really want to hear from you really want to work with you um, and the faculty the faculty at RPI are, are so wonderful and supportive so you'll have your faculty advisor who's probably the first faculty member that you'll meet well after Tom um, at, at RVI um, and you'll you'll see a lot and, and talk to a lot but we have a um, hundred uh, 500 full-time faculty um, and a hundred percent of our courses are taught by faculty which is really amazing so um, you know a lot of schools have graduate students um, teaching some courses but ours are hundred percent taught by faculty which is really really great and you get a lot of face time with them and that gives you really great opportunities to pursue research, to pursue, um, you know, kind of other ways of interacting with them because you do get so much um, kind of time with them. And um, so transfer students are required to live on campus for one year. Um, so that is also something that, um, you know, gives you an opportunity to really get to know the Troy community, to really integrate your, yourself into RPI and um, take advantage of all of the things that we have to offer. And I will, I will just jump in. Um, it is a requirement, but there is also a waiver process. Um, so we have lots of, I would say, we have many transfer students who might be um, older, maybe they serve in the military for um, several years, maybe they're going back for a second career or second degree. Um, so there is a waiver process as well um, for that. So don't let that kind of scare you off if you already have um, a spouse and kids and, and whatever the case might be. Um, we're not gonna make you live in the residence hall with 20 year olds, we understand, <laughs> we understand that. Um, so there is a waiver um, process um, for that. Um, but I think what both Tom and Rama kind of pointed out you're not going to be left alone. Um, you're really going to be supported once you get to Rensselaer. Transfer students are probably even more supported um, than even our incoming freshmen, which we do um, a, a great job with. Um, but, but Tom and Rama will work with you. Um, they'll look at the credits that you're bringing in. Um, they realize that every transfer student is bringing in different credits um, from different institutions. Um, you have different goals on what your kind of goals you want to achieve at um, Rensselaer. Um, and they'll work with you to make sure that you'll, you can achieve those goals and kind of the, the straightest path 
um, that is possible for you. So moving around credits to different requirements, um, really sitting with you and learning with you and making sure that you have a clear plan when you're entering Rensselaer, what your next four semesters or six semesters uh, might, might look like. Um, it will be a lot of work, um, particularly for transfer students. Sometimes you might need to take additional courses or take some a class or two over the summer. Um, but our um, retention rates for transfer students or graduation rates uh, for transfer students, when you compare them against the national average, they're soaring above that. When you compare them even against other schools kind of in our market basket um, are above that. Um, and actually the graduation rates and GPAs are at or even a little bit higher than the kind of graduation rates of our students who are coming right out of high school um, to Rensselaer just due to this uh, maturity that a lot of tra uh, transfer students have, the experience they've had at their other four-year, other two-year institution. Um, we find our transfer students really have a lot of times their kind of path set straight for them. They figured out what they want to do and we're just there kind of supporting you to kind of achieve um, those ultimate goals. But as a transfer student, as Tom was saying, if you're just going to study the books and study classes, um, you're wasting the rest of the experience at a place like Rensselaer. Um, so our student union sponsors over 200 clubs, organizations, our School of Engineering sponsors a num number of clubs and organizations. So everything from musical organizations to uh, the flight club is pictured here. The outdoor, uh, the outing club goes hiking and kayaking and there's this great ski club um, that's on campus in addition to the Formula SAE and the Forge and the other clubs and uh, maker spaces that are available um, on campus. Um, so we really encourage our transfer students in particular, try and get involved. It's again, a place where you can kind of make connections. You can kind of meet their friend, meet new friends. And it's been shown that students who are involved outside the classroom perform better inside the classroom with higher GPAs, higher retention rates, um, higher graduation rates. We're also a diverse place. Um, we have students from all 50 states, over 60 countries enrolled at Rensselaer. Um, there's organizations um, for a variety of backgrounds, beliefs. I think one of the great things I've been about Rensselaer about 15 years um, is you learn from each other, you respect each other, no matter where you're kind of coming from, your backgrounds, your beliefs, um, everyone on campus really does work together. Um, and it is a community that's pulling for each other. Um, it's not a community that you sometimes find at other high ranking schools um, where it's cutthroat and people are competing against each other. Um, it's really, everyone realizes that they kind of need to pull the rope um, to kind of uh, get through um, the RPI um, experience, both in and out um, of the classroom. And then again, just some other additional ways to get involved, whether you're interested in athletics, um, we have varsity sports, club sports, intramural sports, if you just want to go run around the track or with lift in the weight room um, or ride a treadmill or whatever the case might be, um, those opportunities are all available to you. We're a fully functioning university. As I said, we have students from all of the United States, all of the world. Um, so it's an active campus seven days a week. Um, it doesn't close at night. Um, it doesn't close on the weekends. Students are here, they're studying, they're having fun, they're working together and, and enjoying their overall um, experience. Um, now kind of talk a little bit about the boring stuff, the application process. Um, if you haven't applied already, I know some of you have already applied, we accept the common application or the co coalition application. For a school of engineering, we have two deadlines. For fall admission, it's June 1st. For spring admission, it's November 1st. Uh, but those are rolling deadlines. Um, so we're currently in the process of reviewing fall applications now at the end of March. Um, next week or later this week, we'll send out our first group um, of decisions. Uh, but you still have until June 1st to apply. And as I said before, there's no caps on the number of transfer students that we can accept to the university as a whole and no caps to individual majors. So whether you apply today or you apply June 1st, your decision will be exactly the same. We're just really looking for students um, that are able to, that we feel will be able to be successful um, at Rensselaer. That's one of the great kind of advantages to transfer students. Um, our freshman application pool, we unfortunately do have to say no to a lot of qualified and deserving students just due to the number of beds that we have for freshman students, the number of spaces that we have in Calculus 1 and Physics 1. Um, for transfer students, we don't have that kind of crunch. Um, we're really looking for students who will be successful at, at Rensselaer. Um, so it's really nice as someone who works in admissions um, to be able to say yes to those students all the time who are going to be successful. Um, sometimes, honestly, it feels bad saying no um, to a, a really qualified student coming out of high school um, just because uh, of the number crunch that we do face um, on, a, on a yearly basis. Um, so kind of two application checklists. Uh, one, if you're coming in with kind of four or more uh, semesters. Um, so right now, if you're in your, your fourth semester uh, of college, whether it's at a four-year school or two-year school, the decision is mainly going to be based upon um, your, your college experience. Um, if you're coming in with less and you're going to have six semesters um, at, at RPI, 
we will look at your high school transcript and, and test scores if you have them um, available. Uh, but again, most of that decision process will be based uh, upon your college performance. Um, in general, um, we look for students with a 3.0 or better GPA. Um, we'll obviously look a little bit more closely at your kind of core classes. So your math, science, engineering courses, what we will take a little bit closer um, look at. Um, and we are looking obviously for some transferable background. Um, we understand that some students are attending a school that doesn't offer an engineering program. Um, so most of your classes might be in the math science area. Um, but if you are at an institution with, that has some engineering courses, we certainly encourage you to take um, a couple of those. Um, but we do are looking for that kind of 3.0 or better GPA kind of in a transferable program. Um, so kind of saying if you're in a culinary program at, at your community college, you have a 4.0 and you haven't taken any math, haven't taken any science, we're probably still not going to accept you to RPI, even though you have straight A's. Um, we are looking for that kind of background so you can kind of demonstrate your ability to succeed in the classroom um, at Rensselaer. Um, RPI is a private institution. We're expensive. Um, we know um, we're more expensive than state institutions in your home state. But we do try to make an affordable option for our students to attend. Um, so 100% of domestic students receive some sort of financial assistance. Um, you're automatically considered for our merit-based scholarship, so there's no additional applications to fill out for that consideration. And then for need-based aid, so this is need-based grants um, as well as loans, uh, but need-based grants are just money based upon um, your family's financial situation that you don't have to pay back. So just like scholarships, we do require two forms, the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, which most of you have probably filled out for your four-year school and, and two-year institution if you're going there. Um, but we do have another form called the CSS Profile, which is a College Board Financial Aid form, which you will have to fill out once to kind of get that initial merit-based um, read of your application. Once you get your financial aid package, um, please reach out to myself or the financial aid office if you do have any questions It can be complicated to understand. Um, it is a kind of initial financial aid package. So if RPI is your number one school, you get your financial aid package, it's truthfully not uh, doable financially for you. Um, you can write a letter to the financial aid office, explain your situation. Um, sometimes the decisions are just based upon your application, just based upon numbers that the FAFSA and CSS profile kind of spit out. So it may not be your true family's financial situation. So we are willing to kind of work with you um, and through that process. Um, we have a number of different scholarship programs, Phi Theta Kappa, also affiliated scho scholarship programs with uh, uh, universities and colleges that we have do have relationships with, but most of our scholarship money is in general transfer scholarship funding. Um, right now, um, we're still kind of closed to visitors um, due to kind of COVID restrictions. We're just really trying to keep our faculty, staff, and students as safe as possible um, at this time. Um, so hopefully later this summer, maybe next fall, as, as things will improve a little bit with vaccines and the, the COVID experience overall, um, we'd love to have you visit um, campus, love to experience what Rensselaer has to offer. Um, I know even growing up in the Capital District area, I wasn't exposed to what RPI truly has to offer. So even if you're just attending Hudson Valley Community College down the road or on the other side of town um, in Troy, you maybe haven't gotten the chance to see our campus, to sit in a class, to meet with someone like Tom Arama, um, is kind of a kind of a experience that a little bit more in depth. Um, we certainly hope to offer that down the road. Um, for now, if you just want to take a brief tour of our campus, you can go right to go.rpi.edu slash tour. Um, there's a great virtual tour that's available that highlights a general campus tour as well as highlights some of our research facilities and each of our schools um, on campus. And then here are some other great ways to connect um, with us. Um, in addition to webinars like this, um, we also do um, Instagram um, takeovers. Um, so great opportunity to connect with faculty and staff and students um, who are doing that um, experience. Um, and then you can certainly reach out to us um, directly um, in the chat box. I will tape, type my name and email address. Um, so at any point, if you have any questions about the application process or want to connect with anyone um, on our campus, please feel free to shoot me an email and I'd be happy to, to answer any of those questions um, that you do have. Um, so now with about 10 minutes left, I'd really like to turn it over to you. Um, what questions?